What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this statics problem here. So we got this really big bridge. I have a picture of it up too. So um, on this big bridge, right, we have like a million forces happening, but we want to find just three forces. We want to find just this force, this force, and this force. So how are we going to find these forces, right? Well, uh, well, we want to make a cut. So one way we could do it is we could simplify it, and we could basically make a cut here, and that cut is going to make it easier. Another way we could do it is we start at G, and we work our way all the way back. Now, I don't really want to do that, and I think you probably don't want to do that either, because it would probably take 30 minutes to an hour, if I even had to guess, if it would take that much time. So let me actually pull this up, because I'm forgetting something. Yeah, so G is a roller, right? So G only acts as a force upward. So that's probably why you start at G. But let's go ahead and simplify this. So I want to make the cut. Let's make the cut. Um, so I'm going to make the cut here, like along these, along this here. We're going to make the cut right there. And then we're going to say now we have this force acting this way, we have this force acting this way, and then we have this force acting this way. So why can't we do that? Well, we're basically ignoring this now. So we're assuming that these are all in tension. So by assuming that these are all in tension, then we know that there's no forces pushing back because we got rid of it. So right now, all we have is a big force body diagram. So this is F uh, K L, this is F C K, and then this is F C D. And those are the forces that we're solving for. So uh, maybe we can make a simpler version of this. So now let's just make a new truss. So I need my black marker right now, so forgive me. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Inward, inward. So of course we know that this 40 kilonewton force is still here. And then we said that this is F, uh, C, D. Then we have this here, which is down. This is F, K, C, or C, K, whatever. And this is F, L, K, right? And then we know that G acts upward. So we can just label this G of Y. Because G is a roller, it can only act upward. So that's how we know that this is G of Y. And then literally what we have here is this way, way, way simpler equation. We have maybe one, two, three, four, five forces. That's great, so we have five forces now. We simplified this entire truss into five forces. But that doesn't help us quite yet. We know one of the forces, but we don't know the other four. So we have to start solving for the other four, and it's gonna be a little tricky, but we can do it using a moment or some of the forces. So first of all, the easiest force that we can find now, and the one that we're gonna to need to find, is actually G of Y. So G of Y is a roller, or G is a roller, so it only acts in one direction. So if we want to find G, we can actually start at A, right? We can find the moment at A. So A is a fixed point, and you might wonder why we took the cut like this and not the other way. The reason we took the cut like this is because A has two forces. It has A of Y and A of X. We can't find these two forces because they're, you know, we, there's two forces. We can't have enough equations to find them. But G only has one force, so we can do G. So the re that's the reason we chose to use G. But if we take the moment around A, we can find G. So let's go ahead and find that. So if we take the sum of the moments around A, we know it's going to be zero because we're at equilibrium. So let's look at this drawing diagram. So this is two meters, and this is 20 kilograms, or kilonewtons. So that's pushing down. It's going to make us want to go clockwise. So it's going to be a negative sign, negative 20 kilonewtons times its distance, which is two. Next one is 30, so it's going to be the same way, clockwise, so negative 30 times its distance, which is 4 now. And then the next one is negative 40 times its distance, which is 6. And then G pushes the other way. G wants to make it go counterclockwise, so we're going to add G, so this is G of Y, and then its distance is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Right? All right, so then all we have to do is we have to add these up, move them to the other side, and divide by 12. And you're gonna get that g of y is equal to 3.3, or 33.3 kilonewtons. That's very nice. So, 
now we can go ahead and solve. So just heading back to this body diagram, we just said g of y is now 33.3 kilonewtons. And that's going to be super handy. Let's do it. So if we look in here, let's do some of the forces y, because we know this is pointing y, so 40 g of y pushes y, and then f's kc pushes y, but cd and lk push only the x. That means we can find kc. So looking at this body diagram, some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. That's equal to negative 40 plus g of y, so g of y, and then minus, minus fkc. So we're looking for fkc, so fkc is equal to negative 40 plus 33.3. And then you're gonna get the fkc is going to be negative 6.67 kilonewtons. And that means if you get a negative number, because we assumed that this was in tension, if you get a negative number for a tension, that means it's actually in compression. So we can label this a compression force. And there we go, we found one of them. It's not in the glare, is it? Nope, we're good. Cool. So then, let's try something else. So if we take some of the forces in the x direction, we're gonna have two unknowns in one equation, and we can't solve that. So we're gonna to need to do a different method. So what if we take the moment around D? So which one's D? This one's D. So we're here at D. If we take the moment around D, then FCD is eliminated. So then we're just gonna have this known, and we know this now, so we can solve for FLK. So if we take the sum of the moments around D, we know it's gonna be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and add them up. So we have g of y, and then that's pushing counterclockwise, so that's going to be a positive one. And then its distance is 2, 4, 6, so 6 meters. So then we have flk, so flk is pushing also counter, or counterclockwise, so it's going to be flk. And then because it's pushing in the x direction, we're looking for its vertical distance, so it goes up 3 meters, right? This is 3, and then this is 2. So that's going to be... 3. And then FKC pushes downward. That's also counterclockwise. So we're also going to add that plus FKC. And then it, because it's pushing downward, we're going to look for its horizontal distance, which is 2. Cool. So then all of course you have to do is divide or subtract by FLK over here and divide by 3. So let's do that. LK equal to one third, and of course we're subtracting, and it's also gonna be negative. This is getting messy, let me write this better. Right, because we have to subtract this over, so it'll be a negative three that we're gonna to have to divide by. And then, so g of y is 33.3, and then fkc we found earlier is negative, right, negative 6.6, .6. I can't write today apparently, negative six. 0.67 and then times 2. Oh, and this is times 6. Oh, no, I'm just missing out so much today. Times 6 minus 6.67 times 2. Cool. So I think that's the right equation. I'm just double checking. Yeah, so these negatives are going to cancel. It's going to be whatever, you know? Uh, so then you get, where can I write this? I'm going to write it over here. You get that F L K is equal to negative 62.2 kilonewtons, and that's also a compression force because we find it's a negative number. So if it's negative, it's compression. Uh, cool. So then all we have left is uh, C D, and C D is going to be easy to find because I can just do some of the forces in the x. So if you do some of the forces in the x direction. We know it's equal to zero, so we're going to say FLK is pushing negative, FLK, and then FCD minus FCD. So, of course, we're looking for CD, so FCD is equal to uh, minus FCK, or LK, I mean, so minus negative 62.2 kilonewtons. So, the negatives are going to cancel out, and you're going to get that FCD is equal to 62.2 kilonewtons. Cool, and so that's tension, of course, if it's a positive number. So there you go. That's, um, that's all three.
that's all three parts of this question. So you see that's how we did it in 10 minutes instead of doing it in 30 minutes to an hour. So yeah, we saved a lot of time. Good job us. Yay, we can go study more now. That's what you want to do. You can watch more of my videos. Go check out my playlist. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.